like stick, a lot of like stick. Hunsler said that for Governor Carey to have signed Miss Little's extradition order was an act not only of sheer racism, but of political cowardice. In Brooklyn, this is Anthony Preisendorf, Channel 5 News. Assuming that the editor or the publisher or some executive of a newspaper provided the money for Mette Yeager to pay the bribe, is that newspaper or publication uh, liable for prosecution too? based upon the facts as you set them forth, uh, that that would be the basis for prosecution. And the investigation in this case is continuing. It could be an intriguing First Amendment case if the New York Post and other publications ultimately are accused of arranging to pay for the pictures of Berkowitz. Does the First Amendment protect a newspaper's right to pay off, to bribe a public official to get pictures? An issue that could be decided in a court of law. This is Gay Pressman, Channel 5 News. Should I use a, a 72 uh, Cadillac limousine or a 74 uh, Chrysler sedan that's trying to kill me? The city has a lot of problems, and, he, and he, he needs that limousine to get to and fro. You can't expect him to hop a subway. There's too much work for him. I think the limo for our mayor. Yeah. I do, yes. Okay? I think uh, Mayor Koch take the limo. should have the limousine, because it's uh, in storage anyway. Yeah. I think he should take the limo. The city already has it. Why not put it to use? You're in a city <clears throat> where limousines are are just normal. There are, there's a, I think there's 2,500 limousines in New York City. We sell 300 limousines a year. Uh, when you're in a city where the, where that houses the UN with all the di foreign diplomats, foreign uh, everyone comes to New York City. It's the finest city in the world. And I think that he deserves, he should drive. We're a first-class city. We have a first-class mayor. 
and he should drive the finest car in America. In response to this generous offer, the mayor's reply was simply thanks, but no thanks. Because even if it were legally permissible, Koch said, it would go against his principles of taking any gifts while in office. This is Anthony Preisendorf, Channel 5 News. Now I know you've been with us before in these things, but this time, and I mean this time, we got it. Hey, Bill, how are you? How are you? In case you don't know by now, we're going to the Plaza Hotel. It's here. Trust me. No doubt about it. If I were to say CC, please, would that mean anything to you, Tony? <laughs> well, I guess yes. Oh, uh, because you're Puerto Rican? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not... How about if I said Canadian club? Uh, well, maybe say anything to me too, but I don't drink. You don't drink? <laughs> no. Well, it looks like as much as I thought this was it, I've disappointed you again. I'm going to be going on vacation for a while. So please, while I'm gone, I don't want any of you looking for it, because if you find it before I do, I'm in big trouble with my bus. This is John Roller reporting for Channel 5 News.
have anything to say about this? specifically what the charge is. Yes. Well, Mr. Mediego is charged uh, with bribery, uh, rewarding official misconduct. This is Gabe Pressman. Special Prosecutor Keenan announces the indictment of an ex-cop for arranging to get pictures of David Berkowitz in prison. This is Stuart Klein in London with some notes on the theater in the West End. So, Mr. Hartman, are you kind of the, the hired legal gun of the New York City PBA to get the money that they think is rightfully theirs? Well, I like to think of myself as someone who has had experience in the field for a number of years and someone that Sam D'Amelio has confidence in, one who will present the inequities which exist in New York City and hopefully convince the uh, city administration that the police officers are no longer going to subsidize the city and uh, receive less than what is standard for police work in the metropolitan New York area. But with the city uh, desperately seeking help to avoid bankruptcy, seeking help from Washington, is this the right timing for the police to get a substantial raise? I think if it's not done now, they're going to destroy the New York City Police Department. Basically because I'm very angry that Mr. Haldeman is making money off of a breach of his responsibilities as a public official. Lon, you're Deborah's attorney as well as her boss. Obviously, you're doing this together. Why are you bringing this suit? Well, I think there's a moral imperative here that I, I personally have never felt before. Um, Watergate pretty well made me conscious of it. The idea that, that a public official can get away with this kind of thing and then make profit on it. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever done it to this degree. In fact, I'm sure of it. Lon, is there a legal precedent for a suit of this nature? Curiously enough, in the Son of Sam cases, uh, that would be the closest thing, because the legislature passed a statute which forbids a person uh, from uh, reaping benefit from their own criminality. But what can anyone possibly hope to gain from this suit? Well, I hope that other officials in a similar situation would be, that this would deter them from being able to reap profits. What can you personally hope to gain from this suit? Personally, I hope to gain nothing. To get rid of this feeling of nausea every time I see him uh, hold him in uh, uh, smiling over his profits. Self-satisfaction. <laughs> One of the joyous sights of London at night is the Haymarket, an absolute jewel of a theater. It has been standing on this site at St. James Square since 1720, and at night, its lights are a beacon to the bright world of the theater district here in the West End. Unfortunately, the Haymarket's current occupant is a trivial, cliche-ridden thing called Waters of the Moon. It's about some dull people in a drab boarding house whose spirits are allegedly elated by the accidental arrival of a bright, rich woman. That role is played by Ingrid Bergman, who looks handsome,
but who gabs incessantly and is forced to say such things as, quote, how I adore the unexpected. Ms. Bergman keeps telling the boarders that they are wonderful people and they keep insisting, no, we are dull. They were right. The one saving grace here is the marvelous veteran Wendy Hiller, who plays a stuffy matron staring at her colleagues with slow, icy looks that could freeze a sauna. It's a fine piece of comic acting, but the play, as the British are fond of saying, is appalling. Earlier at the Piccadilly Theater, just around the corner from Piccadilly Circus, we saw Privates on Parade by Peter Nichols, the author of two plays that were excellent successes on Broadway, Joe Egg and The National Health. Privates is a spoof of the British Army in Malaya in the 1950s, focusing on an army touring entertainment union. It has won awards as London's best comedy of the year, but it relies primarily on homosexual humor, with most of the eight performers at one time or another swishing in drag, a form of comedy the English love. It has a couple of chuckles, it runs for three hours, and I found it interminable. Neither Privates on Parade nor the Ingrid Bergman vehicle, I suspect, would stand a chance on Broadway. Sorry to come all this way to tell you about a couple of downers, but there is some excellent theater now in the West End, and we'll be telling you about some of these plays which may come to New York in our next report. For the moment, I think I'm going out right now and have a pint. This is Stuart Klein, Channel 5 News in London. If you had 12 First shot here, Giff, uh, you played defensive halfback your early career. I played a lot of defense. As a matter of fact, the first two years, uh, it was all defense with a little bit of offense maybe in the, the second year. This is against the Washington Redskins. Another member of that defensive backfield unit, Paul, was uh, a great football mind. I learned a lot from him, Tom Landry. He was a player coach. Of course, this is one of Lombardi was your offensive coach in these days. 41 trap, I know oh, yeah. that. He loved to run that 41 trap. So here's a reverse. We used to use a lot of reverses, a lot of takeoff plays, as we call them. You run one play, like an in sweep, and then you come back with a reverse. The body was a great trickster, but he believed in strictly power right. football, and here it is. You set up one play, and you come back against the grain. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a play to Webster, right? Yeah, that's the option play. The halfback comes up, I throw it. If he stays back, I run it. Well, this is really what set you apart in those early years as far as a halfback. Now, a great shot here. This was Lombardi's theory here. A little draw play to the left halfback. Gifford, play over the middle, but you cut to the outside and ran to daylight. Another goal line running over a linebacker there again. Oh, well, everybody fight. Option, jump pass. You don't see that too much. Well, I had a little show with you. That was much better your first couple of years. We did a lot of things uh, in those days, Paul, because we didn't have too many. Well, here's players. really the versatility. You're running back a kickoff here. And watch this move here, Giff. All great backs, I think, in an open field will defeat the tackler more than 50% of the time. Oh, you have to. It's really tough on the defensive man, one-on-one -on -one in open field. Nice over-the-shoulder catch for another score. Not bad considering I'm nearsighted. The 19th threw the ball a little behind me. I reached back for it. I caught the ball, and then bang, I ran into Charlie Bednarik, and that really is not a, advisable.
they had probably as balanced a ball club for the for the league at that given time as you could find. They had one of the uh, number one defenses, and uh, Lombardi had come in with that power running game with Frank Gifford and Alex Webster. And the league really wasn't ready for a power running game. They ran more than they threw. And I think that, that type of combination, the, the running game that uh, sustained possession of the ball and then that good defense, that's what made it a very potent club. You know, you got to remember guys like Jack Stroud, Roosevelt Brown, Alex Webster, Frank Gifford, Kyle Roach, Charlie Conley, Robustelli, Mojaleski, Greer, you can go on and on and on. And I think everybody in the sports world that, that uh, is a football fan can remember those names. And that's what I remember most is the people. Did they carry you, Sam? Did they carry me? Yeah, they sure did. Yeah, they let Jim Brown come right through to me. And I said, why me? We won a lot of football games, but we won with a, with a, with a great bunch. We had great coaches uh, and some great players. It was a lot of fun. Played in maybe the greatest game of all time, that 58 game with Baltimore. Is that, in your mind, the greatest game that you ever saw or were involved with? Bill, I wish I could answer yes. So many people have put the same question to me. We played a very poor game. It was the worst game I played all year. Uh, quite frankly, I fumbled the ball three times. Uh, one of them resulted in a Baltimore touchdown. One resulted in us not getting a touchdown. Uh, it certainly wasn't the greatest game I ever played in. People recall it because, of course, it was the overtime thing with Baltimore. Johnny Unitas is incredible day uh, uh, just the entire happening that took place I think it uh, quite frankly was uh, the forerunner to making pro football uh, the popular sport that it is today in this country